Hey guys, it's Chris, and today I'm going to be tackling a project that I've had on my mind for quite some time now. I'm going to be building an interactive LED wall. The idea behind this project is that I'll have a display of white tiles that are thin enough that an LED can shine through them and the tile will diffuse the light. Each tile will be pressable and have some sort of interaction when somebody clicks on it, whether it's a game or just simply changing the color. For this project, I'm going to be using these WS2812B LED strips and an Arduino Mega for its many I.O. ports. The tiles that I'm going to be using are going to be 3D printed. As you can see, they're very thin. Each tile has a rod in the middle so that it can have a button underneath it and it has grooves cut out for LEDs. I'm going to mount an 8x8 grid of these tiles to this piece of wood behind me and then run LED strips underneath them with a matrix of uh, tack switches. I'm excited to see how it actually looks. I have to print 63 more of these, so let's get started. So it's been a couple days and I've already run into another problem. Um, the biggest thing is the way that I'm doing the buttons, uh, traditionally for 64 panels and 64 buttons, you'd have to have 64 I.O. pins uh, to connect all those buttons to, and they don't make an Arduino that's that size. The workaround I found uses the keypad library, um, which basically has all of the buttons in a column and a row hooked up in a matrix so that uh, when you press a button, the Arduino knows which column and which row that button is, so it knows which button you pressed. Uh, the problem is, in order to connect all the buttons, I need to have wires flowing between each of the panels. So I have redesigned the panels to include these holes around so that wires can run through. Um, the problem is that I've already printed about 30 of the panels that I need, and now I have to reprint these ones. So uh, what I think I'm going to do is just cut notches out of the ones that I've already printed, but print the rest with these notches. So now we have all the LEDs down and the wood is cut. All that's left to do is solder everything together. Uh, I have some example code that I've already written so we can test it out. Uh, I hope you guys like time lapses.
All right, so we've got all of the LEDs wired up. I have the Arduino hooked up here, ready to run some example code. All I gotta do is plug it in. And we'll see if it works. There we go. All right, all the lights are working. This means we can move on with the project and start writing the actual code. Now that I've connected all of the LEDs uh, and we've tested them to make sure everything's working, uh, I'm going to wire up all the buttons. Uh, they're going to form an 8x8 grid. All of the rows and all the columns are going to be shorted. Uh, what's going to happen is when each tack switch is pushed, it is going to short that column and row together so that the Arduino knows which column and which row was pushed, and we can use that information to update the LEDs. So for the buttons, what I'm going to do is go in and start by flattening out pins. Then I'm going to solder one wire to either end um, and just make a grid of this. I'm going to do this off camera because it is going to take a while and it's going to be extremely boring. So quick update on where I'm at. I have glued down all the buttons. I currently have it running code so that each button, when you press it, will light up the six LEDs around it. All I need to do is finish printing the tiles and glue the tiles down, and then the rest will be all software. Uh, while I'm waiting for the rest of the tiles to print, I'll probably get started writing some more interesting code. Since I began this project, the biggest problem that I hadn't quite solved was how I was going to attach each of the panels to the board. Uh, I proposed this problem to some of my engineering friends, and the solution we came up with was uh, these brackets that would glue down to the wooden panel between all the tiles and use friction to hold four tiles together at each point. Combined together, all of these tiles can now make a grid, uh, and once I glue these tiles on, we should be able to push all the buttons. One of the disadvantages of coming up with this solution this late in the process is that now some of my panels have holes in them and some of them don't, uh, where the solution means that I don't actually need holes in any of my panels. Uh, it should be fine, I'm just going to put all the panels with the notches in them on the inside and leave all the, un uh, leave all the panels without holes around the outside. Um, yeah, this way it looks nice and uniform on the outside and I don't lose any of the functionality. Because of the addition of these brackets holding the tiles together, there's also a need for a spacer going between the button and the plunger on each tile. Uh, I'm just going to glue each spacer to the button itself, and the tile's going to sit on top so that the tile can be replaced later if it breaks or something else happens. 
uh, that should make it a little bit more module, make it last longer, make it easier to repair small problems.
now that I've got the project mounted to the wall, I'm going to call it here for this video. Um, there were a few problems that I had along the way. Uh, a couple of the panels, as you saw, fell off. Um, I also haven't printed the cover for this bottom piece yet, but that is on the way. Um, be sure you guys stick around, because in the future I'm going to be updating this video, or uploading a newer version of this video, uh, where I rebuild this project and basically improve it in every single way. In the meantime though, I am going to be adding more to the code, I'm going to be adding games and other modes so that there are more options, more things that you can do, because this is, you know, as just a button board, there's a lot that you can do program-wise with this technology. Uh, if there's anything specifically that you guys would like to see, be sure to leave a comment down below, uh, and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one that I upload. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.